Okay, we're back after a longish break this time. Um, this is session seven already, in day two. Uh, with us is our first speaker, Barbara Murovitz, visiting scholar at the Max Planck Institute in Florence, but actually coming from Ljubljana. So, um, ready? Yeah. So, I hope you all have strong coffee. Uh, but anyway, if in the case my, my presentation is not interesting enough. So, <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, having me here and. Um, I, I will start a short So, Fascist cultural policy in Ljubljana has become a subject of research since 2016 when the EU HERA project transfer of cultural objects in the Alpe Adria region in the 20th century was launched. My project at the KHI in Florence builds on these foundations. In today's paper, I will focus on Fascist and Nazi culture policy in the two year period from May 1941 to September 1943 in Ljubljana and in connection with Ljubljana. I'm particularly interested in questions about the role of art historians and artists and the current reception of translocations from the time of the occupation. From 1918, the majority of Slovenia ethnic territory was part of Yugoslavia. The occupation began in April 1941, when the Slovene territory was divided up among four occupation forces. The central part of the country was occupied by fascist Ljubljana, as the former center of Slovene lands became the seat of the provincia di Ljubljana. Thus, the Slovenian culture and political center was a new Italian region, in fact, the last Italian province the northeastern periphery until September 1943, when, after the capitulation of Italy, Nazi Germany occupied this part of Slovenia, the Slovenian territory as well. 
Walter Frodel, Franceske Lehr, Fausto Franco and Hugo Karman each reacted in their own way to the new situation after the reshaping of borders under the First World War. All four were deeply involved in the institu institutional monument protection system of their respective state, Italy, Austria, or Yugoslavia, when in 1941 a completely new situation re emerged with the German military occupation of Yugoslavia. The unis about the role of individuals and their attachment to a particular regime in the Second World War has led to a number of suppressed narratives and to rewrite of biographies and historiography. And often to extreme simplification, uh, scientific evaluation of good and bad of those who did right or wrong. This attitude towards the past is questionable for a number of reasons, including the fact that it evaluates individuals from the post-war perspective of a winner or a loser. In such simplifications, Austria must be the first victim of the Nazi system. For Italy, this must be a sum that most artists uh, resisted uh, fascism, at least by remaining silent. And in Yugoslavia, at all good artists and art historians were part of their resistance. On the one hand, the circumstance, circumstances of war were indeed elementary, since the national conflict identity of a national collective identity often provides the main context of actions for individuals. On the other hand, the circumstances of war were much more complex, and many of the decisions taken by, by individuals and groups were made within a context of intense propaganda, indoctrination, and ex ex existential fear in which individuals felt they had no choice. However, adapting to and taking a part in the system was a common reaction even among the art historians and artists. More than evaluating the rights and wrongs, it is important to understand the conditions as profoundly as possible and to study individual cases. Thinking about the art, uh, from the perspective of the center and periphery is decisively influenced by the educational background of the individual researchers, as Ines and Cristiano demonstrated so well yesterday, and by the identity and personal experience. Looking at Carniola, Istria, or Dalmatia by Yupo Kamperman and Frances Telek was undoubtedly strongly influenced by the fact that they both belong to the Venice School of Art History, and that they worked in the field of monument protection. Stere's attitude to political system was also profoundly marked by his experience of five years' captivity in Russia. After the collapse of the astro Empire, art historians were placed in a fundamental new social cultural context. In Yugoslavia, between the two wars, the works of strongly national South Slavic context, particularly in the 1930s, the extensive propaganda policy in the ruling Karadzorjevic dynasty and the attempt at visual unification were decisive in the public space. In general, among, uh, among historians, the following comparison between the Malaysia and Ljubljana is accepted, quoting Sanila Schmidt from 2020. For the evaluation of Italian policy in Dalmatia, a comparative look at the other annexed territory, the province in Ljubljana, is worthwhile. Although both were incorporated, uh, incorporated in the national territory, the two provinces had a completely different way. Slovenia played a marginal role uh, due to few Italians living there and the lack of Italian militantism. Therefore, it was administrative, more like a Occupied territory and no digitalization was attempted either in administration, culture, or school. The annexation of Dalmatia, on the other hand, was celebrated by the fascists as its return to the homeland. Italianization and fascistization were purposed from the day one, but their failure, but their failure was already appeared at the end of 1941 for various reasons. Not enough uh, adequate personnel could be found. The Slavs resisted the Italian plans, and the uprisings in the hinterland did the rest. In the community of staff, specialists, and experts that had played a key role in the field of monument protection and the translocation of cultural objects, 
on all sides in all regimes. Max Dvorak comment, commented in relation to post-war war one resti um, restitution issues is well known. Dvorak addressed a letter to his Italian colleagues concerning Italian restitution claims for works of art from Austrian museums. I quote, it was not a nice impulse, gentlemen, to move your to demand um, to move you to demand the Venice pictures and policies, since you are the spiritual authors of these questions, um, requisitions for foreign, foreign culture assets. Without your advice, your government would hardly have the idea of abusing its power in this way. Unquote. One of the main early tasks of the fascist authorities in Ljubljana was to rescue Tiepolo's drawings. Hmm. In 1916, the drawings of Tiepolo from Museo Civico in Trieste were stored in the regional museum in Ljubljana by the responsible conservator Anton Dimiris. After the war, the Yugoslav authorities did not return them to Trieste, which became part of Italy. In fact, the removal of Kipo's drawings was one of the first tests in April 1941 to which the fascist occupation authority devoted themselves. Among the experts on the Italian side was, was, was also the architect Fausto Franco in his cap, uh, capacity as a superintendent of the Vera Arti de la Venezia Giulia. A similar prompt action following the arrival of the fascists was the destruction of the public monuments of the royal family of Karen Djordjevic. In addition, the fascist, the fascist occupation authorities worked closely to represent, representatives of Nazi Germany. The racial policy foresaw the unification of all Germans in their German life and therefore the relocation of Germans of Concheria from the Italian province of Ljubljana. At the same time, the fascists allowed Germans in the Italian occupied territory to collect information about monuments, photographs, photograph them, and make inventories of museums and private collections, which they claimed to be expression of German nation. And one of the key people involved was Walter Fodel, born in 1908, Strasbourg, a great strength art historian. Already in 1933, a member of the NSPAD of the uh, and the Gulf Conservator Office of Carinthia in this period. He was assisted by Erika Hanschkindl, a young art historian from Munich. In 1941, she was in charge of preparing photographs of German monuments and cultural objects in Ljubljana for the exportation to the German Alliance. For both, Frodo and Hans Kegel, it is known to have continued successful careers in Austria and Germany after the war. In his memoirs, Frances Teller wrote in 1938, he handed over the running of the Institute for Monument Protection to Frances Teller um, in 1938. I quote, when Mrs. Neal was, uh, was suspected of collaboration with the Liberation Front, Front in 1944, Dr. Walter Frodo got him uh, discharged and helped him to move to Carinthia. At the same time, Walter Frodo, as a member of the SS, took part in the seizures of Jewish heritage and the cultural uh, erasure of Slovenes. Furthermore, during the occupation, he cons consistently referred to Slovenia as South Carinthia, that is, by the new geographical term, which means to completely disappear. Uh, the complete disappearance of the region that had existed until 1941. After the war, he remained in close, friendly contact with Stelle and with, with the widow of the killed Mrs. Neal. The complexity of the personalities that were part of the art system in the fascist Ljubljana, the attitudes and about all the relationships to the occupation regimes and their public institutions is often a cause of discomfort because it does not allow simplifications. In historiography, biographies of artists and art historians are often the subject of silence or mythologization. Often this is because they represent well, um, because they represent complex relationships and because individuals act differently that seem appropriate from today's perspective. It, it, it is easier to label someone simply as hero, perpetrator, supporter of the regime of the nation. In 
In the following, I will briefly illustrate the complexity of the case study of the gift of um, 100,000 Italian lire that Benito Mussolini donated to the National Gallery in Ljubljana in 1941 for the purchase of Italian and Slovene artworks. As I had already mentioned, there was no historical continuity in Ljubljana to which the occupying power could refer and on which it could build the fascist special identity. It is interesting, but also quite logical propaganda strategy that the fascists linked the, uh, the so-called Italianità and Modernità with the purchase of Slovenian modern artworks as well. Uh, such a practice showed that the principle of demonstration of cultural hegemony also included support for Slovenian modern artists from whom they bought artworks. Supporting artists from purchase and exhibition policy was one of the central principles of the attitude toward the, um, in the system of fascist Italy. The architect Fausto Franco was officially in charge of the purchases and selection of Italian artworks. My assumption, which I cannot confer confirm entirely, is that, the collaborated, uh, that he collaborated with the painter Capriano, um, Cipriano Efizio Oppo, at least in Rome. Archival sources document negotiations and acquisition, acquisitions from late 1941 till early 1943. Artworks were bought in different Italian cities, especially in Rome and Venice, mostly directly from artists. The selection confirmed the principle of fascist cultural policy that art, artistic style was no, um, not understood as a visual identity. Some of these art, uh, works uh, acquired, for example, by Filippo de Pisis, would have been labeled as degenerate in Nazi, Nazi Germany. In 1997, Catalogue of National Gallery of Ljubljana for the permanent collection of the so called European painters by Xenia Rosman and Federico Zeri. The provenance of the artworks is closely given, and in the short artist biographies, such as those of Giorgio Moranti and Oppo, ideological and political labels are included. Moranti's landscape, both from artists as a gift from, uh, from Mussolini is interpreted as a, I quote, personal protest against the fascist dictatorship, unquote. Uh, through the study of uh, Moranti's pupil, Janet Ambrose uh, Abramovic, published in her monograph, uh, Giorgio Morandi, The Art of Silence, we know that this interpretation is part of a post-war reworking of the artist's autobiography that would help liberate him from the environment in the fascist system. This fascist donation is, this donation is still part of art collection of the National Gallery of Slovenia and descriptions by Bosman and Zeri published in the gallery's official website. Although the fact that the acquisition is a fascist donation is well known, the paintings have not, uh, <coughs> cannot be discussed in this context so far. On the contrary, the National Gallery's website offers the reader an unusual interpretation of the presence of paintings in the collection. I quote, Represent representatives of Italian paintings in the 1930s, such as Gino Severini, Giorgio Morandi, and Filippo de Pisis, demonstrate that Slovenian art is in, in this century surpassed the limits of regional ambitions as well as achievements, unquote. In the short description of Oppo's biography on the website is mentioned, I quote, he was president of the fascist syndicate de Novellanti. Nevertheless, copies of this portrait of his daughter are sold online by the National Gallery of Slovenia as magnets for the fridge for four euro and twenty cents, without any explanation about the artist's content. To conclude, uh, the concept of heritage, patrimonio, erbe, pashkina, or didiscina, to put it in Italian, German, Slovene, or Croatian, it is technologically and social economically linked to homeland and heredity and to individual and collective identity. The inc incorporation of this concept into heritage conservation, museum practice, research, and teaching is often taken for granted. In many cases, however, leads to the exclusion of the other. 
In the 21st century, Western art history invests a lot of time and effort into so-called widowhood marking, the reparation of the injustices of the Second World War. But even in this process, it is often remains one side and threat in the national narratives, accepting black and white interpretations. Therefore, it makes more than sense to fully adapt an international and interdisciplinary orientation. Thank you. Barbara, thank you a lot. So to stay in this uh, slightly context, as you said, <laughs> we'll continue with uh, Peter Fell. He is a um, researcher at the Zagreb Institute, at the Institute of Art History in Zagreb. So, here we go. Thank you, Martina. The title of my paper is Center and Periphery in Interpretations of Creation of Art. Not. The relations between the artistic center and the artistic periphery became apparent during the 20th century as a fundamental problem in the interpretation of modernism in Croatian art. On the one hand, there was distinct awareness of Croatian modern artists that they lived and worked outside of the center. Accord accordingly, it is understandable that their view was directed toward key artistic tendencies in Central and Western Europe. However, transfers of these artistic influences from the center to the periphery were neither simple nor unambiguous. Artists from cultural backgrounds that did not directly belong to the process of Western European modernist evolution were forced to reshape artistic language and stylistic features that art histori historiography often considered progressive in order to meet local requirements and often meet limited respect the deceptive possibilities of the audience. On the other hand, Croatian art history, based on the Vienna School of Art History and strongly influenced by the tradition of geographical approaches in German art history, has always implied geographical postulates. The fact of geographical position, which in the historical and political constellation is most often rightly understood as peripheral or marginal, was implicitly or explicitly present in almost all interpretations of national art of different periods, including modern art. It can therefore be concluded that the most important phenomena in Croatian modern art were interpreted with an awareness of the influence of different, different cultural circles and accordingly, the already mentioned formal and stylistic adaptation to social, political, and economic situation. Yugo Karaman's ideas and thesis, with the affirmation of geographical predestination manifested in regional artistic features, also had an important impact on the interpretation of Croatian modernism. Echoes of Karaman's theory can thus be recognized in the essays of many art historians who have been systematically dealing with Croatian modern art since the 1960s. However, at the beginning, it is necessary to mention Ljubo Babic, painter, critic, art historian, university professor, and organizer of artistic life, who implicitly paid great attention to the issue of the center and periphery. First of all, in the process of developing Croatian modern art, he considered it crucial to shift the focus from the Central European cultural circle, Vienna and Munich, to French art and Paris. Although he studied in Munich himself, he considered the moderate current of French painting to be a model for, for Croatian painters to follow. Furthermore, in his text with theoretical pretensions, as well as in a large part of his painting, Babich advocated the formulation of our expression, a specific expression that should have the characteristics of the place where it originated, be in some way national, and still look like that it can represent Croatia's contribution to European modern painting. We will therefore not be mistaken if we conclude that Ljubo Babic gave a specific contribution to the issue of the relation between center and periphery. 
However, the year 1966 is especially important for clarifying the relations between the center and the periphery in Croatian art history, and especially for the part considered concerning the history of modern art. Then, in the first issue of the magazine Život of Gnostic, several essays were published that put this problem directly in the center of interest and determined the main points of interpretation on the basis of which this issue will be further considered. The unsigned, short, introductory text raises important questions related to the historical, geographical, and social environment of artistic creation in Croatia, primarily issues of peripheral position, quantity and quality, and then the evaluation criteria. I quote a key problem. Our attention is tied to something else. Does the criteria of the centers apply to this existing factual peripheral quantity, undoubtedly related to the environment in question without appeal, and is the path to the periphery therefore a path of absolute degradation of value? Or does the peripheral position appear only as a definition, as a description of the, of the relative state, and in itself capable of appearing as a determinant, different and in some ways contrary to the postulate, postulates of the center? Unquote. Milan Prelog's text, The Problem of Valorization in the Art History of Our Country, is a famous critique of Karaman's basic thesis, which were otherwise received very affirmative. Recognizing Karaman for an, an important theoretical attempt that would have an in, immeasurable impact on further interpretation of Croatian art of all periods, including modern art, Prelog points, points out that Karaman's thinking of the problems of peripheral art has two important weaknesses the problem of spatial non-differentiation, and the problem of time constants. Without taking this opportunity to clarify Prelog's objections to Karaman, based on examples from Croatian art and architecture of the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, I will quote the final thought, which will be very uh, applicable to the disciplinary relation of national art history to modern art. I quote, development of European art history today opens up new possibilities for the process of re-evaluation of artistic material created on the soil of our country. And only by knowing the meaning of and goals of this development can our provincial art history definitely break with its provincial mentality." Unquote. In accordance with the above opinion, it is necessary to consider the following two texts published in the first issue of Zhivotomitnosti magazine. In an essay entitled Our Space in Art, an extensive and theoretically grounding and sometimes difficult to pass essay, Igor Sivic discusses a wide range of issues from the notions of folk art and national art to Ippolitian's theory of art as a product of race, place, and time, from Kurlaja's speech at the Congress of Writers in Ljubljana in 1952, which abolished social realism in Yugoslavia, to the issue of the retardation of artistic style. However, for the discussion of the modalities of interpretation of Croatian modern art in the context of the relation between the center and the periphery, the following Zidic's thoughts are particularly important. Unquote. We cannot look for national art in the past or national expression in the present. It was only contemporary Croatian art that awakened the illusion that we had reached Europe that we are not late, that we are no longer a province. There can be no Western European modern style. In all examples, we meet strong, closed circles of people who complement each other in building one vision. And finally, the style of the artist cannot be retarded. Retardation, as well as progress, is a term that is associated with the average production, that non-specific an impersonal residue of artistic activity." Unquote. However, the most influential text published in this issue of magazine Giro Tumirnosti, which lays the foundations for the interpretation of national modern art, is that of Bojidar Gagro entitled Peripheral Structure from Karas to Exa. In this essay, the notion of the artistic periphery appears as a central motive. 
and the valorization of national modern art as the art of the grip of the periphery emerges as a key problem to which creation art history must try to provide answers. Starting from the notion of the periphery and asking the question of what is truly ours, Croatian art, Gagro introduces the problem of valorization through the motive of the third re reality of the timeless imaginary museum. Aesthetically valuable works are united in this imaginary empire, but at the same time, injustice is true. Because, as Gagro explains, I quote, there is room only for the purest, for top works of art, and everything below remains in the darkness of worthlessness. Unquote. This fact, of course, has to do with the geography of art, the notion of the periphery, and the presumption of the lesser value of artistic production in a peripheral environment. Gabra further argues that in trying to determine the value of Croatian modern art and its protagonists, it is necessary to accept the existence of peripheral phenomena and its importance, and that it is imperative to get rid of the assumption that this, is, that this art had to follow Western European models. Therefore, aesthetic criteria are proposed, I quote, which will not be excluded from the comparative criteria, but will be supplemented with it. It will serve as a starting point and a source of critical argumentation. Finally, on the, example, uh, on the example of Ivan Nestorich, Gagro presents what kind of valorization paradigm he stands for. Nestorich should not be viewed in the context of Rodin and Bayon as a mere recipient of the formal influences of famous sculptures. It is necessary, if we want to emphasize the indisputable value of his work, to emphasize what is his own, I quote, what was born through and beyond possible influence." Unquote. It is understandable that the same is true for the entire Croatian modern art. Given the focus on key issues of interpretations and the ambitious approach to the possibility of valorizing the art of the periphery, Bosnia Gagra's peripheral structure is an essay that is almost unrivaled in the history of writing about Croatian modern art. It has been quoted by many, its individual parts have become commonplace, but Gagan's valorization paradigm did not see the expansion of theoretical basis and the eventful, fruitful upgrade. Here, we should mention a series of exhibitions held in the Art Pavilion in Zagreb in the 1970s and 1980s which sought to look at the Croatian contributions to the key European avant-garde tendencies of early 20th century, Cubism, Expressionism, and Surrealism. In the selection of works and the interpretation in catalog texts, it was especially emphasized that, looking for Croatian echoes of the mentioned artistic phenomena, one cannot look for copying artistic patterns or direct influence. Also, there was an awareness that the scale of values should not be established with regard to the values of the center, but that it must be constructed in the relation to the circumstances in which art was created. These exhibitions thus confirm the view that the art of the center is not viewed in a way that privileges it in the terms of value. Confirmation of uh, this are the thoughts of art historian and curator Jelen Koshevic, who in the early 80s, writing about the avant-garde in Croatian modern art, concluded that they are not just, I quote, a hybrid of European avant-garde trends, but synchronous authenticity, unquote. Finally, Gergo Gamulin, as the author of very influential books of Croatian painting in the 19th and 20th century, calls for the abolition of the absolutization of the highest European critique criteria, and concludes that our artistic phenomena should be judged, I quote, from themselves, from their evolution and conditioned possibilities, unquote. At the end of this brief review of the way Croatian art historians have viewed the problem of center and periphery interpretations of modern art, one must ask how productive in the context of national art history 
are methodological attempts to deconstruct prevailing, prevailing views of the art away from European art centers. Can different evaluations of creation modern art be achieved within the Piotr Piotrowski's model of horizontal art history, or maybe using the methods of global art history? The answer is by no means unequivocal and will require an extensive study. At the end of this paper, it can only be pointed out that within the Croatian art history for more than 50 years, there has been a call for the establishment of scale of values that will not privilege the art of the center. Regarding the view from the center to the periphery, I will finally quote Beatrice Erdinel, who, looking critically at many results of global art history, concludes, I quote, marginalization or the presentation of, per or of periphery as a dominated, alienated, and inequitably despised and misunderstood, something that the overly dichotomistic logic of center periphery methods paradoxically reinforces, could be ameliorated only to through pragmatic transnational historical work, end of quote. And I will add through the knowledge and appreciation of the results of national art histories. Thank you. Peter, thank you a lot. There will be time for discussion later on, some questions and comments from the audience. But now uh, we will hear Petra Shari. She is a PhD candidate in art history at the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences and Nova University in Lisbon. Did I say it right? But actually, you are a other students of art history. Right, I was. Yeah. Yeah. I finished my bachelor uh, master here and then I moved to Okay, that's good. That's nice. The, making connections um, internationally. We'll hear about uh, socially engaged art in the early 20th century. So, here you go. Okay, thank you. So, hello everyone. Uh, today I will talk about the problem of defining local versions of socially engaged art, taking as a case study Croatian Association of Artists Zemlja, meaning Earth, and Portuguese uh, Neorealism, neo as you can see in the title. So, uh, the objective of my research was to analyze the connections of both these left-wing, predominantly Marxist-inspired, this is the key word here, artistic phenomena with the Communist International, the Comintern, and later on Cominform, taking the potential instructions and guidelines on artistic and aesthetic level into further analysis as a potential center by comparing the debates that occurred around the similar issues and questions, such as primacy, of content over form, or even a step further, the social thematic and tendency over individual artistic values and polarpolitism. However, and it has already been demonstrated by various researchers, both artistic phenomena did not have a single uniform idea, source or center, it had look, uh, it had look up to uh, or draw inspiration from. Rather, multiple centers or references and sometimes heterogeneous conceptualizations and explanations of their own impulses and directions, but at the same time, always in relation to their local context and reality with a socially engaged connotation. Starting from the theoretical framework of social uh, art history, art is never completely independent of the reality in which it is created. On the contrary, it is always in a certain correlation with it, and vice versa. This, not, this does not mean that art inevitably shows reality, but it will be, to some extent, under its influence. The socio-historical events, the dominant theoretical platforms, the prevailing market principles, as well as the existing interests that determine the activities of members of society in a certain historical period. All that affects artistic production and implies an understanding of art within a broader social context. In order to further develop my analysis, let me briefly exp explain the socio-political context of both these artistic phenomena. Zemlja was created in, in 1929 and prohibited by police decree six years later in 1935. In 1930s Kingdom of Yugoslavia uh, was an underdeveloped country with 80% of people working in agriculture and living in difficult conditions. 
the unresolved agrarian issue entangled with class issue was one of the key problems and topics in society under the dictatorship and also a motive in the base of Zenda's interests. On the other side, we have the Portuguese neorealism that included various types of artistic media, literature as its most elaborate and prominent part, visual arts, painting, sculpture, film and music, among others, but I will focus here mainly on painting. It emerged in the late 1930s or early 40s uh, with high activity until the beginning of the 1960s. I'm re referring mostly on painting here. At the same time, as we heard yesterday, Portugal was a dictatorship with strong censorship and people living in extremely difficult conditions. Coming from the very similar starting position, neorealist painters also dealt with a similar content, showing hardship of rice field workers, fishermen, rapers, while searching for the new attitude and aesthetic. The Zenda artists, rather than considering themselves as distinguished artistic personalities, acted as an artistic collective or artistic front, as Vesna Vukovic writes, with manifesto and elaborate program opposed to the idea of civic and bourgeois art and the institutional art as a complex production, distribution and reception apparatus. Some Zenda's members or guests were academic painters, sculptors and architects, and other were peasants who used the vernacular to depict the dominant social relations, relations and the oppression of a working class. The topics that they dealt with, uh, dealt with were various, but most of them revolved around giving the voice to the oppressed in the urban and more all rural environment by depicting the peasant workers, urban misery, a poverty, requisition, sometimes daily life, or aforementioned, uh, of aforementioned protagonists, and so on. Some Zemlya's artists were also a member of, at the time illegal, Communist Party of Yugoslavia, and were writing for monthly magazines and literary journals, some of which organized by the Communist Party or its members. Alongside Zemlya members, the distinguished writers and left-wing intellectuals were also publishing various articles and reviews, critics, travelogues that influenced the notion of artistic expression and the way to look at the role of art in contemporary society, mainly taking as an inspiration the events from the Soviet Union cultural sphere as uh, the only communist-led country at the time. In the recently published study, The Comintern Aesthetics, um, there is a chronology showing various key events, decisions and protagonists revolving around the notion of proletarian, revolutionary, or genuinely socialist culture, with each of these terms describing different concepts and changing throughout the years, together with the international and local politics and resolutions which followed. I have far too little time to get into these shifts, but I will stress out three events that are considered to have either inspired or caused conflicts in regard to the case studies I'm talking about, and these are two conferences of the proletarian and revolutionary writers, in the 1930 and 1934, and the 1932 revolution on restructuring Soviet culture. The first event is the second conference of the proletarian and revolutionary writers in Kharkov, held in 1930 with 100 delegates from 23 countries present. Even though Yugoslavia was not present, the German delega delegation was chosen to be the intermediate between Yugoslavia and Soviet Union, sending Yugoslav writer and art critic Otto Bihali Meri. The culminating point of political and literary uh, controversies on the Yugoslav literary left, known as the conflict on the left, was Miroslav Krlija, very known 1933 forward, to the series of drawings by Krzysztof Krist Hegedusic entitled Podravina Motives, where he insisted on artistic forces, quote unquote, and refused creation based on resolutions and directives. That caused a big split within the collective and some Zemlya members retreated from the association. Vida Knezhevich, besides discussing many other relevant questions, suggested that in spite of privilege of preface, the common denominator stayed intact, meaning the tendency that was present from the very beginning, the democratization of artist production and bringing arts to the workers and peasants remained uh, an idea remained as an idea until the very 1935, therefore the socially engaged art was present in its form and content. Now moving to Portuguese example, um, the case study of neorealism uh, as the peculiar cultural opposition to the dictator Salazar's regime. 
Some of the involved artists were members of the time illegal Portuguese Communist Party or members of the Movement of Democratic Unity and its juvenile section. For a small amount of time, uh, it was a legal platform of the anti-fascist opposition to the regime uh, founded uh, after the World War II. Uh, the so-called internal polemic of the neorealism takes place between 1952 and 1954 in regards to the artists and the artworks relationship with the society. Coming back to that in a moment, I shortly want to talk about the political co uh, connections uh, of the Portuguese Communist Party and the, to the common term and later common form. The Portuguese Communist Party, abbreviation PCP, was founded in 1921. Already the following year, it was uh, it established contact with the Comintern, but it was expelled from the Comintern in the 1938 and re-established contact only 10 years later through a highly ranking member of the PCP, Alvaro Kunal, who traveled to Yugoslavia in 1947, hiding in Partizanka, Yugoslav uh, Transocean passenger ship that was held in Lisbon for some time. He initially came to Croatian city split, then passed two days in Zagreb and went to Belgrade, later on to Moscow in 1948. This was not the first contact between the Yugoslav and Portuguese communist and anti-fascist politicians, due to the fact that there was a Yugoslav diplomatic mission, an embassy in Lisbon, and it was the only political entity with the local socialist governance present as such in Portugal. Researcher Jorge Santos Carvalho writes about various ways uh, the embassy was supporting the PCP, and he also mentions the ambassador Dragan uh, Jovanovic's reports, in which uh, Jovanovic talks about his efforts to promote the current post-war situation in Yugoslavia to anti-fascist and legal Portuguese press, and also mentions that Yugoslav diplomats came into regular contact with the left Portuguese intelligentsia, for the most part from scientific, literary, and artistic circles. So coming back to the internal polemics of the neorealism, uh, which took part in the early 1950s, while aforementioned Alvaro Kunal, uh, who traveled to Yugoslavia, was imprisoned as upon his return. I will turn to Mariana Pinto dos Santos' analysis, who is also present here, uh, and the analysis is presented in her book. In Portugal, um, Plecano's book, Art and Society, was read. It was a book that theorized a Marxist aesthetic, as well as a concept of socialist realism that was introduced as a rather vague concept uh, at the time in Soviet Union. Antonio uh, Hamsh de Almeida published uh, an essay, Art and Life, in 1941, first of its kind, that systematizes ideas on the realistic aesthetic in, Portuguese, in Portugal, taking into consideration not only literature, but visual arts in total. It served as a programmatic text on Portuguese neorealist aesthetics uh, to be discussed later on uh, within, uh, within neorealists. Some years later, Antonio José Saraiva will enter into a polemic with, artistic, with artists uh, whose art he considered divorced from the social problems, who are more, but also neorealists, who are more heterodox in their artistic uh, expression, considering their art uh, socially engaged, even if artistic form and expression was in line with current uh, modernist uh, or other artistic uh, contemporary tendencies. Instead of conclusion, I would like to further develop the research on specific points in the internal discussions and literary artistic personas that also, to some extent, took on the role of local and in, uh, internal narrative creators in relation to socially engaged art, acting as the rule makers or the adapters. So I will stop here for now and thank you. Thank you, Petra. Um, take a seat, please. Yes, I'll go back also, Petra and Barbara. Um, so take a seat here in front of you. And if we would have any questions from the audience here, live, comments. No. Okay, Peter, you are actually, you made a, your PhD thesis on Zendra. Yes. And how would we actually translate it into English, Zendra? It's not, it's not the earth, earth but, but the soil. The soil, soil. Right. Yeah. right, yeah. I've, I've seen, if I may, I've seen a book. Okay, 
That's true. I, I, in the literature, I've seen both of the translations, but uh, yeah, that, that, that's correct. You, you're referring the correct, to the correct. Yes, yeah. the correct translation to English yeah. is solid, right? not earth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's like. Yeah. Thank you, Peter, for your impression and um, of this uh, art in Croatia in the pre-war period, but. Um, why did you connect it with this post-period production in Lisbon? Yeah, it's like a, that's a question. Huge. Right, I, that's a question I was expecting. Um, so I connected it on the basis of um, a theoretical inspiration, uh, of the, some kind of a, a theoretical background, and therefore I was a, that, that would be the Marxist inspiration uh, in the basis of the. Some of the artists, not not all of them, but some of the artists' agency and or, or concepts or ideas, and uh, yes, it didn't uh, happen at the same time. But I but I found some some connections, and that's why the first uh, the first step in in my opinion uh, was to to look at uh, how how connected or unconnected uh, were these two uh, phenomena, maybe not call them movements, to the to the commentary itself. If if there was a Indeed, the Marxist uh, tendency behind it, or material dialectical uh, approach to art. So that's why. If I may say, I, I, I'm looking forward to results of, of Petra's research. <laughs> Do we have any questions from the audience? Yeah. No. Um, maybe later in the final. <laughs> okay. Final maybe. discussion. Okay, thank you then but for now. Um, we'll have a very short break in five minutes and we'll be back for the last session. And the good news for everybody, uh, all speakers here, with your main tag, you have a free entrance to the Kulovice uh, Vitori Gallery, and there you have a very nice two exhibitions of uh, Flint and uh, Vlaka Bukovac. So, to add all this we can see.